every high school student, and especially those in college that are taking a math, need to know how to solve this problem. I think it's a paramount type of problem that students, a lot of times, they just get stuck. They see so many fractions, and they just usually want to give up. So the main thing I want you to look at on a problem like this is if we can just get rid of the fractions, hopefully you can like calm down and <laughs> realize that you can follow the steps that you know how to do for solving equations. But when you have the fractions, it makes things everything so clouded. So the main thing I want to bring to you is how can we get rid of fractions? And my favorite little tip to get rid of fractions is just to understand why we have fractions. Now, in this case, we don't really need the fraction, right? Because four evenly divides into eight. So therefore, we have two. So our main goal to eliminate a fraction is to find something that our denominator evenly divides into. Now, here's the problem. We don't have just one denominator. We have one, two, three different denominators, and they're all different. So what we need to do is we need to find the smallest number that all three of our denominators divide into. And we call that the least common denominator. So another thing that kind of gets tricky with this is students have a trouble like finding, they might know what to do, but then they're like, I don't know what the least common denominator of all these numbers. You don't want to multiply everything across. Like that's going to be a really, really big number, 90 by the way. And so therefore you don't want to multiply everything by 90. That's crazy. So, you know, one thing that I just mentioned with students is like, especially if you're taking a test or a quiz, you know, sometimes it just might be helpful to write them down, right? Sometimes you like your brain is already thinking in so many different directions. So it might just be best just to write down the multiples of each of these numbers. And guess what? The more you do this, the more that you get used to finding the least common multiple of your numbers, the faster and faster it is for you to start seeing patterns. But if it's not easy for you to see patterns right off the bat, don't worry about it. It's not that you're bad at math. It's not that you can't do it. You just need more practice with everything. So immediately, I see 30 is a common number, right? There's no other numbers that are in common. Now just three go into 30? Yes, of course it does, right? Three, six, nine. Voila. So 30 is the smallest number that is a multiple of these two numbers. And remember, if it's a multiple, what that means is these numbers, like six, divides in all these numbers. Five divides in all these numbers. Three divides in all those numbers, right? Those are the multiples of our number. So 30 is the smallest common multiple, LCM, of them. Well, when we're dealing with in denominators, then we just call it our least common denominator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply everything times 30. Now, I'm not just writing this as 30. I'm actually writing this as 30 over one. This is another kind of mistake that students will get mixed up on. They'll multiply the 30 like times the denominators. We don't want to do that. Remember guys, our whole goal is this. We want to find a denominator that's going to evenly divide into our numerator. All right. Now, I don't really like to do this all the time, but especially sometimes when I'm teaching or if I'm you know, starting a concept, I will break things down step by step my students. So for you guys, I kind of want to do the same thing. I want to show you where all the counting goes when I multiply this 30 times each one of these terms. Okay, now a couple things that I did as in for like mathematics, instead of like doing the multiplication sign, I just put what was previously my equation. I've just put those terms in parentheses, okay? So again, our operation is still gonna be preserved. We're still gonna be multiplying all these. I just wanted you to see 30 over one. It has to be multiplied by each one of these terms, right? And again, it's 30 over one, which is the same thing as what? 30, okay? Uh, now, but here's this important thing. Six divides into 30 how many times? Five times. 5 divides into 30, how many times? 6. 3 divides into 30, how many times? 10. Guess what, guys? We took our denominators and divided them into our numerator. We got rid of, we got exactly what we wanted. Now, all we simply need to do is multiply this one more time. So 5 times 5x is a 25x. Negative 6, or 6 times 3 is an 18, but it's remember it's subtraction, so it's minus an 18. Where's our next? There's my x. Forgot about that variable. Don't forget about the variable. And then we have 10 times 2, which is going to equal a uh, bank day. Okay, so now we have a, an equation. We have variable on both sides. And I always like to get my variables on the same side, or I always like to make them positive. So I'm gonna subtract a 20x on both sides. I get a 5x minus an 18 equals zero. But again, if I need to solve for x, I gotta solve for x, right? I, my goal here is to get x equals. So to do that, I need to add the 18 to the other side and then divide by five. Now, I do not like uh, mixed numbers, so I'm going to leave it as an improper fraction. And a lot of times students are like, oh crap, it's a fraction, like I did something wrong. But we go back, check your work, 
right? And not all fractions, like we a lot of times we like to have integers, but just because it's a fraction doesn't mean it is the wrong answer. Okay, so check your work, make sure there, a lot of times we do have easy answers or integers. So double check, make sure you did everything correctly. But this one, I am confident, so we are good. Hopefully this video was helpful for you and it gave you some value. If it did, then you're gonna love the next video I have for you here.